I'd like to call the meeting to order. Good evening, everyone. This is the special meeting of the Scarborough Town Council um, to discuss the fiscal year 2018 budget. It is approximately 7 o'clock. If you could please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And as I mentioned at the workshop, for those who are just joining us on uh, watching, we did have a town council workshop to discuss uh, tonight's topic. So if you didn't get a chance to see that, um, I'm sure it, will, it was taped and it will be re-shown. Um, it's not on the agenda, but I will, um, oh, I'm sorry, before I get to talking, roll call. <laughs> Councilor Donovan? Present. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Foley? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Jasso? Here. Chairman Baybine? Here. Um, so it's not on the agenda, but we will have public comment. Um, so if you would like to get up and speak, um, if you would come to the podium, you do have three minutes each. Um, and if you could please state your name and your address uh, when you speak for the clerk to record that. My name is Susan Hamill, and I live at 3 Bay Street in Pine Point. And um, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the budget. Um, regardless of your position on the school budget, it's very likely we all feel a little bit like Bill Murray in the movie Groundhog Day. In the cult classic, he relives the same day over and over again. But unlike him, we've not learned the lesson from that film. We've not changed our perspective or behavior to achieve a different outcome. He changed his behavior by becoming more kind and understanding of others. In this process, he became a better person. That potential exists for all of us. The facts are clear and the issues are unavoidable. Our demographics have changed and we have not responded to the needs of certain groups in the town, such as those on fixed incomes and those who are struggling to make ends meet. We need to be able to meet the needs of all the citizens in Scarborough, not just those with school-aged children. Distinguishing ourselves with the record number of school budget rejections in recent years is not a legacy we want to have. The future is in our hands to change this legacy. We possess the ability and the will to do so. What we need is competent and confident leadership to help us chart the path and follow it. Efforts like the town manager's letter of July 14th highlighting the need for more long-term budget planning, forecasting, the upcoming comprehensive plan neighborhood meetings, and the Council's communications initiatives show great promise for changing direction and engaging the public for alignment and support. We can now begin by, first, let's hold this next year's bud projected tax increase to less than 2.5%. Second, implement a three-year planning cycle for the budgeting process and find ways to, to Im include meaningful taxpayer input. And finally, develop a plan to reduce the town debt and commit to it. This is a budget that all voters could support. And I'd like to just address comments made by Sean Babine and Tom Hall to the forecaster implying that the town will be experiencing <coughs> financial difficulty serious financial difficulty as a result of not having an approved budget and therefore not being able to set the tax rate and get the tax bills out. Really? These statements are false and our state legislature provided an easy remedy for any town finding itself in this position. I know this and you know this. These comments are nothing more than scare tactics to convince voters to pass the next budget no matter what it is. They have no place in this discussion and are just another example of the serious trust issues that have gotten us to this very spot of needing to put a budget out for a third vote. We need to rise above this kind of behavior. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marge DeSanctis, 54 Beach Ridge Road, and I'll do a disclaimer. I totally support the budget. Um, a couple of reasons. Um, when our economy is good and we have a strong school, people move into town. When people move into town, businesses grow, restaurants come, our tax base grows. It shares the burden of all the services amongst more people. If our schools deteriorate, 
or the ratings for our schools goes down, people will leave town or new people won't come. That means those services that we all love will be shared by fewer people. Businesses will close, things like that could happen. So I support the school budget because I think a strong school system is at the core of every economically sound town. I think you need a strong school system to keep the economy of the town running. I think the 2.99% tax increase is reasonable looking at the details of the budget. If you cannot afford it, the town does have means to help you. Come in. Take advantage of it. If you're a senior on a fixed income and you're having a struggle or whatever the reason, come into town, talk about it, and find out what assistance might be available for you. I understand that there's people that can't do everything that others can. There are some very wealthy people in this town, um, and there are some that aren't. I'm the chair of the Scarborough Housing Alliance, and we're trying to get more affordable housing in Scarborough because it's so hard for children to even move into town that they've grown up in because of that. So I understand the economics, but we need a strong school if we're going to keep our vital community growing and keep those businesses and share that burden. So I, I totally support it. And for those people who are voting for our current legislators, they are supporting the LePage agenda and budget, which keeps cutting our school money. So um, consider how you vote as well, because every vote you, you make has an impact on the town. So even if you're voting in an Augusta agenda, it's going to come down and trickle back to Scarborough. So um, be aware of what you're doing and how Maine Education Association rates some of our current legislators which is, I'll just say, not good. Um, so we've lost a lot of money in this town, and so we have, to, we have to make up a lot of that. So I just encourage everybody to look at the details, consider the ripple effect if you don't vote for this, people leaving town, businesses leaving town, and what this is going to do to your property values, et cetera. I support a strong school system, and I support this budget. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dan Quinn from 24 Tenning Lane, um, and, it, and it's it's great to be able to, to follow uh, follow that because I, I myself uh, and my family are, are transplants uh, as of about a year and a half ago, uh, and as as we moved into the area, um, the primary consideration we had was the school system, and with all the independent research we did, both online and talking to people in various communities, uh, it seemed to pop up that the Scarborough, uh, Cape Elizabeth, Falmouth, Cumberland, and Yarmouth were com the five communities that a, a transplant should consider. Uh, and I mean, thinking about you know what all the work that goes into that, and then digging into some of the numbers that are just publicly available. Of those five, we're actually funding at a per pupil rate lower than any of the other four. Um, so so to think that we're over investing, or and I know we talked about efficiency analyses. Uh, just in the workshop prior to this meeting, uh, I mean, at a high level, it doesn't seem like we're we're spending excessively in order to provide this high quality uh, education. Uh, so, from my perspective, it, I think you put together a, a pretty reasonable budget. And I mean, the disappointment and frustration I have um, being 18 months into the community, um, not not necessarily with the council, but with the community and in their evaluation of your work. Um, is, is a little bit disheartening. Um, so, so thinking about you know, what what we are putting together, um, it's, it's also one of the lowest tax rates in the area, uh, and I think everybody here knows that because you put together that one pager. Um, so Falmouth is is really the the big exception, uh, but they're looking at raising their taxes by six percent, uh, which is a much more significant change than we're talking about here today. Um, so, uh, to piggyback on some of the conversation that. Um, that did happen during the workshop earlier. Um, given how close we were able to get during this last um, this last budget uh, push, I, I think you know, a pretty minimal cut should be able to push us over the edge and, and hopefully um, not cause too much damage in, in the quality of the education we're able to provide to our children. Thanks.
Uh, Benjamin, Benjamin Howard, Seven Windsor Pines. Uh, sorry, I was unable to attend the earlier session. Um, tonight, I, I wish I could have been the first person to speak, as I was hoping that tonight, instead of us uh, discussing why the vote win as it, it, it may have or may not have for any of us voting, that instead we just come up here and suggest places that maybe the budget could be cut or it could use to be cut because um, as of right now, the voters are still asking for the budget to be cut. Yes, it was very close, um, but again, the townspeople think we can do better. Um, for me personally, having spent a, a, a fair amount of time looking through the original budget, and unfortunately there was never a, a, another large PDF where you actually saw uh, what the budget was asking for, you know, increases in sports departments and whatnot. Uh, having gone through that, I, I questioned some of the positions that we're trying to hire at. Personally, as this is the education budget, I, I don't believe sports um, should be included at all. Um, being a Scarborough High School uh, graduate, I went through the education department and everything, and I believe that the education is fair, but being a part of that sports department, I spent a lot of time out there um, trying to raise money for my, my sports team. Um, already, sports are being funded on their own, um, I think that's just a great place to really start to look to cut money. And I know there's a lot of families out there that have sports ties. Um, again, this is about education. This is about educating our youth. I know sports brings about an alternative form of education, camaraderie and education. But again, uh, plenty of sports teams and residents in this town are already c gathering their own money and bringing their money together. Um, for something for the future, uh, for next year's budget, um, I believe that we need to start doing analysis on proposed spending. Uh, I myself would like to increase spending in the IT department to develop uh, better websites. IT is one of those jobs that, like the municipal um, mechanical department where we service ourselves out to other towns, IT can be centralized here in Scarborough and not only serve adjacent communities but larger communities. Um, that being said, we are also pushing in the education department for increases in uh, IT education. Uh, these individuals are free education, essentially. We're paying them to do services for the town. If they have extra time, why not have them teach a class or two to the couple of students that would like to listen? Um, back to the analysis of these projects, uh, I believe we need to take a more business aspect when we do analysis, is saying that, okay, if I hire this guy for $40,000 a year and I'm getting this amount of service out of him, the value to the taxpayer is this, and if we're able to do that and present that information in a format such as that, maybe it'll be easier to convince the taxpayer that, hey, this is why, where we're spending your money instead of just comparing it to last year's budget. Um, so these are some of the things. So uh, hopefully more people will come up and come up with some of their own solutions. This is only the first reading. It's a good chance to have yourself be heard and to explain sort of where you think budgets could be cut so that the councilmen here that you voted for can better uh, make decisions. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Jubilus. I live at 16 Haystack Circle. Um, and I find myself up here again. And believe it or not, I really do hate public speaking. But this is where we are. <laughs> the school board and the town council have worked diligently to propose a budget for successful schools with a 2.99% reasonable tax increase. Um, high performing schools are vital to all citizens. The school outcomes have the greatest impact of all of our community services on our town's future. But the budget hasn't yet passed. And here we are near the end of the summer. And I find myself in public speaking again. Um, as a taxpayer and a parent, I believe schools are vital. Whether one has children in the schools or not, we all suffer when our schools are inadequately funded, property values decrease, students graduate unprepared, and the employment market will stagnate. This year, our school system has been hit extra hard with significant decreases on the part of state funding. The woman who spoke and said the problem is in Augusta is 100% correct. This most recent budget failed by only around 80 votes, and I would urge minimal cuts as a result of this to our subsequent budget. This vote was hardly a mandate in a town of this size. 
we must pass this budget with minimal cuts. Adequate funding of schools does have significant impact on outcomes. There is a lot of debate on what actually impacts school outcomes, but there is an April 2016 NPR article that was supported by the Quarterly Journal of Economics in 2015 that cited pure pupil spending as correlating with improved student outcomes, not necessarily in the form of increased test scores, but notably decreased poverty rates in adulthood and improved college attendance rates. The most important factors in this funding study for student success in the future were class size and teacher pay directly impacted by school budget. And the greatest effect was seen when funding for these was sustained over time. Obviously, we've had significant issues with this. And teacher compensation is problematic in Scarborough. Our teachers are paid significantly less than in surrounding communities. Our annual incomes are $12,000, $20,000, and $30,000 per year less than Cape Elizabeth, Falmouth, and Portland, respectively. <coughs> to remain competitive, Scarborough must attract the best teachers. And to do that, our teachers must be compensated accordingly. Without an adequate budget, this is an impossible task. We owe this to our children, to our town. A well-educated population is the bedrock of our community. To be honest, the animosity I have felt around the school budget for the past couple of budget cycles has been alarming. It scares me for my first grade age daughter. It scares me for the other children in this town. It felt very personal and it felt very attacking and it significantly concerns me for how divided this town is going forward. With continued cutting of school services, how will our town look in the next 20 years, in the next 50 years? Is this a place you would want your children or your grandchildren to attend school? On the current trajectory, I personally would say no. So please consider minimal cuts as we proceed forward in the budget process. Thank you. Elaine Richer, 5 Brief Lane, 2080 Grand Avenue. Um, I'm not going to talk about money. I want to talk about what you talked about this, uh, this, ap this evening. And that was on the process, trust, and transparency. Um, you talked about keeping the second reading and the vote on the same night. And I don't have a problem with that except when amendments are added after the public has an opportunity to comment on them. I think that's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's called being blindsided. If you feel going forward that this will not happen, I am okay with that second reading and a vote. But if we can't comment on amendments that you are bringing forth, that's not transparency. The other thing is trust. In part of that amendment, you're probably going to know what I'm going to talk about. It's always, I'm always up here with beach cleaning, so you've got to know that that's where I'm at. But on the, on the beach cleaning issue, we were told that there, there wasn't $6,000. There's no way. There's not even one little place you could have found $6,000. And then when you renegotiated, you found $71,000 out of that same budget to give to the schools. I have nothing against the schools. But that doesn't sound like a place where we want to have trust. And you've got to be honest with us. And I think that going forward, if you can do that for us, we may have a better situation. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Megan Fallon. I live at 25 Sequoia Lane, and I just want to say I'm a supporter of the school budget, and I have I am also a recent transplant um, within the past year and a half to Scarborough. And one of the biggest deciding factors of moving here to Scarborough for my husband and I was the schools, and we always felt that Scarborough really supported their schools and put money into their children and the future of their town, and that was the biggest reason why we moved here. And I just feel like it's a shame that we're not willing to put the money into the children and the future of our town. When you have good schools and you put more money into the school department, then more people are willing to move here, such as myself. And then good things start happening. Prices of homes start increasing, businesses move here, and it's just the future of the town just skyrockets. And it just breaks my heart that people of the town are not willing to invest in the future of the children. And if we want to have better programs in our school, such as business classes or, or better IT or keeping the sports the way they are, then we need to put money into the school. And that's just the way it, the way it has to be. Um, I think we need to make it so Scarborough is competitive in not only the state but in the country with our school department. And 
we need the school budget to pass. And it's just, it breaks my heart that it's not doing that and that we're here again for the third time. And I just do not think that we need any cuts to the school budget. It needs to stay as it is um, to, for the future of our children. Thank you. Good evening, Larry Hartwell, 9, Puritan Drive. Um, I'd like to put some of the citizens here at rest, at ease. Uh, our high school was recognized by national, uh, U.S. News and National Report as number six in the state. And if you exclude the state-funded one at Limestone, we had the fifth highest or best school in the state, something to be proud of. Um, I've certainly voted no I've, on, on this issue, but I think we have great schools. We have uh, great staff, great facilities. We've replaced every dollar that the state has taken away from us over the last several years. We've also, since 2011, increased on top of that another $12 million. That's a 33% increase, and our school population is about the same as it was then. Um, this year, we're looking at a $1.3 million increase over last year. So we need to keep that in mind that the cuts aren't the cuts from what was asked. But um, what I came up here to talk about was, and I heard some some positive things going on at the meeting tonight. Some things that we need to look at, and I'm very encouraged by that. I heard that when we talk to the town manager, we, we go out to him and we ask him to bring back a budget with a percentage increase. And that's all I've asked for on the school side is to simply the, the, uh, the town council to say to the school, as they do to Tom, okay, we're looking to keep it at a 3% increase. Increase in spending as opposed to what's the tax rate going to be? How much is the spending going to be? And so I think, you know, we've been doing a good job on the municipal side. This year, actually, uh, if it was just the municipal budget, our taxes would actually go down. Uh, on the first reading, many times it's mentioned here over the years, uh, the first reading, reading really doesn't matter. It's just, just to get things going. But I would just caution you tonight that the first reading is important. The number you come up with tonight is important because it's going to follow you through to next week. Next week, whatever the number is today, you have to vote and approve that before you can start amending it. So that becomes the number. So if we can't do anything with, with amendments, the number that you come up with tonight is the number. So I would just, like I say, I've heard that in the past. Oh, it really doesn't matter. We'll just, we'll just come up with any other. So I think 50000 is is too low on a $43 million budget. Um, I think we need to have a larger number than that. Uh, the other thing is, it was mentioned by the article that was in the paper, uh, quoting uh, uh, officials in this town, and I would hope that we could uh, come out and rebut that. The, the headline was misleading, but people that don't get beyond the headline, it, it looks pretty negative to our community. And second, your discussion about what do we do if it doesn't pass, I think we need to issue the tax bills. Whether we're off by $100,000, on a, a $93 million budget, really irrelevant. 100000 goes into the reserves. That's a much better play, I think, than saying, oh, we're going to bond. It's going to cost us tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. I know we can do that, but I think, I think the trust side would be better on just issuing the tax bill. Um, so thank you for your time. And thank you for all the effort that you're going through this year. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stacy Newman. I live at 17 Windsor Pines Drive. My husband is away traveling, so I'm here with the three kids. And they need an education so they can read and not play on the iPad. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I am here to support the budget and ask that there be no further cuts to the budget. Um, I feel your frustration with the lack of a budget passing, but I think the narrow margin of this vote is not a mandate, and I know that many families who previously voted yes will now be switching to the no side. I think if there's further cuts, we're not going to pass a budget again. I think you are our leaders. You speak for the whole town. That includes the 80% who didn't vote for the budget. That includes the children who can't vote for the budget because they're not old enough. And we as leaders ask you to do that. You've presented an excellent budget. You've got a lot of information. You've now brought it below 3%. 
and I think that no further cuts are necessary, and I trust in you to lead the town with the Board of Education to um, demonstrate that this is appropriate. We know that there isn't further spending on the school side. The, the increase in costs are because we got uh, less money from the state. Um, I think they've been extremely responsible with what they can cut, and um, I hope that you will support the budget without any further cuts. Thank you. And I think that my children may want to speak, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Um, say something. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. You can. You're sure. Oh, you can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, say your name. My name is Andrew. I live in Woodsville, Bonnie Drive, and I hope for the rest of my life I say that for <laughs> the <laughs> Yes. Hi, I'm Sarah Mullen. I live at 55 Gunstock Road. Um, so I've been hearing a couple of things between conversations with some counselors, the workshop, other comments people have made that the some of the people who voted no did so because of concerns about trust or planning or efficiency audits or whatever the right words are. And I'm certainly not trying to put words in people's mouths. But what I'm hearing when I listen to that is that the problem isn't actually, at least for some of these people, with the number in the budget. And if that's the case, and to be totally honest, this is how I felt before I even heard all of that, I don't think we need to make further cuts. If those are the problems, additional cuts, $50,000 or less or more or whatever, that's not even going to address those concerns. This was a budget that you all supported. You all supported the first one. Um, and so just making these like death by a thousand paper cuts doesn't even ultimately address what sounds like some of the concerns are. So our schools already do so much with so little. That's true, we do have a really great school system, but we have spend less per pupil than the surrounding towns. Our tax rate is less, as you all know, than the surrounding towns. The teacher salaries are less than the surrounding towns. We already have a really streamlined, tight school budget and school administration. So I certainly encourage no additional cuts. And I agree with what Stacy said, that if you make substantial cuts, there is a good chance that people who otherwise have supported it are going to flip to the no side. And then that's not going to get us in any better place come September. So I encourage no cuts. Um, I don't think we need them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Howard, if you could actually wait, since you've already spoken, Ms. Perry, I believe is coming. No, nope. it's okay. Jacqueline Perry, 215 Black Point Road. I am a member of the Board of Education. Just want to make a couple of points. I met with the superintendent this afternoon, and she has more accurate figures than I'm going to give you. But if the football boosters don't come up with $56,000, there will be no football program this fall. Booster groups in this town give in excess of $500,000 to support the programs. The parents pay in excess of $200,000 in participation fees. I don't know what the, what, uh, so the sponsors of the various sports activities donate. I do know that the, the athletic director does not put in the budget for the school board and the superintendent all that is necessary because he is dependent upon the funds from parents and boosters. I would like to see our students in our schools to have the same pupil-teacher ratio as our teams do. Because if you go to any game, 
in this town, whether it's basketball, football, softball, baseball, you will see four, five, six coaches. And take the softball team, for example. If there are 30 girls, 40 girls, and you have five coaches, what's the ratios? We don't have that in our schools. We don't have it in our classrooms. We don't have robotics. We don't have the opportunity to have the tech classes that we would like to have because we can't pay for the personnel. $159,000 we're at less than last year's budget. So folks, I don't envy you. I have to sit there tomorrow night and make some decisions based on what you're making tonight, but I appreciate the work you're doing. I appreciate the support from the community. I even appreciate the naysayers because they make us think more. But let's get the right facts. Our students, parents, boosters contribute. And I don't even know what teachers are contributing every day by bringing in the Kleenex and whatever else they bring in. But it's a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jess Libby. I'm from 501 Black Point Road, and I also hate public speaking, so <laughs> I appreciate that I'm up here. I just wanted to make one quick point that the concerned taxpayers said that they wished that the school board was keeping their increased spending below 3%, and they actually did that. It was only at 2.88, and then it got increased to the 6.8. Um, I could be wrong my numbers because I'm not on the finance thing because of the state cuts. So they did do what was asked of them, and they presented a reasonable, reasonable budget. You all agreed with that. And so because of that, I ask that you keep the cuts to the minimum. I mean, I was working on the PTA letter for the incoming third graders at Wentworth, and the list of items that we asked the parents to provide to help out the classroom, I mean, it's got to be at least 10 items. And then I talked to my friends who are starting to get their classrooms ready for the school year, and they're out buying crazy amounts of supplies for the classrooms. Our schools do so much with so much less compared to the communities that are similar to Scarborough that it's, it's atrocious. I'm almost embarrassed right now to say I'm from Scarborough. Every time I see our name on the news, it's the same thing being said, oh look, they're having another vote. Another vote didn't pass. We're an incredible community. It's gorgeous. I'm, I used to be so proud to be a part of this whole thing, and right now it's just so ugly that it needs to somehow end, and I feel like it kind of needs to start with you all. Like, you need to take a stand and say, you know, we're done with this. Like, this is what it is. We need to move forward. No waffling back and forth on Facebook saying, I'm not sure of this and I'm not sure of that. Like, we just need to commit to never saying, this is what we're at. Everyone get out and vote. But I really don't know much more than that. But I'm going to go. Thank you for your time and thank you for all you've done. I'd uh, like to speak and line up so that we go a little faster. That would be wonderful as well. Hi, I'm Hillary Dargan. I live on Sequoia Lane. Um, uh, there were two things that I wanted to address. Um, the first thing is the issue of trust in our community. And I think it's actually really sad that there are so many people who distrust all of you and our school board because I don't think there's one single person up here in front of me or on the school board who is doing this for any other reason than to serve our community and I don't think there um, I don't feel like there's a lack of transparency almost everything you do is in the public even your uh, you know your workshops and the school board every single meeting is in public um, and I just I think it's sad that that there are people who don't trust and respect you for the position that you've chosen to take and it's not an easy one obviously because um, all of this keeps happening the second thing I want to say is that um, is that um, I'm a big supporter of the school budget, and I think that, like many people have said before me, that you know the vote was extremely close this time. Um, I think it, you know eight. I think it was 80, <coughs> a difference of 80 votes, um, and I don't think um, that that's really a mandate for a huge um, decrease in our school spending. I think that. Um, you know that I would like to see the budget stay the same if you feel like there needs to be a cut 
then it should be extremely low. Um, I think we're really close. I think that the budget you guys have all worked on and the school board has worked on is a reasonable budget. Our tax increase is reasonable. I mean, taxes go up. This is, this is the way of life. <laughs> um, I think that was reasonable. I think the increase in school spending was reasonable, especially considering the amount that they have lost over the years from our state. Um, so, like I said, I would just like to see a extremely low or no cut from the budget. Thank you. Is anybody else that would like to speak? Not seeing any, we're going to close the public hearing. Thank you. Uh, oh. Mr. Howard was had a second. He wasn't in the room. I didn't know he was there. Oh. Mm -hmm. ben. Uh, ben Howard, Seven Windsor Pines. Um, after listening to the remainder of the comments tonight, I, I think the fact that we've gone back twice to the vote should not be looked upon negatively as, oh my God, I'm from Scarborough. Why did we come back? This is what politics is. This suggests that Scarborough is one of the best towns in, in southern Maine. We come out, have different sides, and we continue to push for what we think is right. For those of you that continue to believe that it's only 80 votes, that's a majority opinion. It was only 80 votes that the President of the United States was elected, essentially. It was a close call. But I can't just go back and say, All right, well, since it was so close, can we just stick with the former President? No. The best part of this country is that we continue to vote and everyone comes out and discusses and debates and we take that debate and we look at each other and we see, you know what, that's actually a good idea. I like that idea. Maybe I'll use it and uh, try to accommodate it. These are opinions. Um, I, can, I can look through, and I, I did a fair amount of research before I came out tonight. So the, uh, the school budget, as we have it set up as a town, is going to always account for two-thirds of our budget. Well, according to the 2010 census, only 33% of households in the town of Scarborough have school-aged children. Um, that's suggesting here that uh, only really 33% of households get a value, a direct value out of education. I understand that there's plenty more values of education. I believe that of, it is the utmost importance that we teach our youth. We teach our youth how to debate, how to have these discussions, and how to have these different opinions. But if we're going to continue to just stand here tonight and say, let's not do anything because the vote was so close, um, the vote was so close, uh, we don't need to make any cuts. The majority of the town came out and voted. Yes, it was by a narrow margin, but it suggests that we are getting somewhere. No one ever wins in politics. If you look at the founding fathers, the South wanted to uh, account every slave as one whole person. Yet the North said no, but at least at the end of the day, to move the country forward, they compromised. And that is where we are here. We sit here, we're at a budget. Both sides have compromised to a fair amount. I thought the uh, previous budget was, we were getting there. My numbers I, I would have liked a little bit different, but I felt that the other side presented a fair budget and they tried to cut. But obviously the town didn't think so. So instead of continuing to say, let's not do anything at all, let's get together and start compromising here. I know it's close, it's 80 votes, we're almost there, we've almost hit that perfect mark where at least half the town's pissed off that it passed and half the town's happy that it passed. <coughs> Mr. Howard, do you need to control your language? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. And you're done, thank you. Yep. With that, I'd like to close the public hearing and um, move to the first item, which is order number 17-070, act on the request to certify the results from the July 25th school budget validation referendum election. And if I could um, have a motion. So moved. Second. And just for clarification, um, what has been presented to us by the town clerk for certification is the school budget validation referendum that was held on July 25th. The yes votes were 1,847 votes. The no votes were 1,930. There were three blanks. Therefore, it passed. So we are certifying that. Is there any comment or questions from council? Not seeing any. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. 
Moving on to order number 17-071, a first reading and schedule a public hearing and the second reading on the fiscal year 2018 municipal and school budget. I'd like to turn it over before we take a motion, turn it over to the manager for any comments and uh, presentations. Well, the budget uh, motion is postured before you this evening exactly in the form that was last approved and failed on July 25th, so that is the starting point. Uh, there was certainly a discussion uh, among the council in your workshop, perhaps that uh, has encouraged someone to propose a motion. That's what will have to happen going forward. Uh, I suppose you could pass it as currently prepared, but uh, if you wish to have any changes of any sort, uh, a motion would be in order. I would note part of the discussion earlier this evening also discussed uh, timing and process, and this order does include um, the scheduling of the public hearing and second reading. So if there's any interest in changing those dates, uh, again, amendments uh, would be appropriate. Thank you. And um, for um, purposes of starting the conversation, I'm going to read the actual uh, order, budget order, number 17071, and that will be um, the motion, and then if somebody would second that afterwards, it would be appreciated. Be it ordered that the Scarborough Town Council moves approval of the first reading on the fiscal year 2018 budget. I have the wrong document, sorry. <coughs> When they have the notes on it? For the date insertions? So correct me if I, I'll read it. I'll go ahead and read it so if I, hopefully I'll get it correct. Um, be it ordered that the Scarborough Town Council moves approval of the first reading on the fiscal year 2018 budget and schedule the public hearing for August 8, 2017 and a second reading for Tuesday, August 16, 2017. Whereas the Scarborough Town Council adopted fiscal year 2018's operational and capital budgets for the town and the school on May 17th with the passage of order number 17-030 and whereas pursuant to state law the school budget must be validated by the voters and it failed at a special school budget validation election held on June 13th 2017 and whereas the Scarborough Town Council adopted an, an amended fiscal year 2018 operational and capital budgets for the town and the school on July 5th 2017 with the passage of order number 17-063 and whereas pursuant to state law the school budget must be validated by the voters and it failed at a special school budget validation election held on July 25th 2017 and whereas the town council must resubmit an adjusted school budget to the voters for validation no less than 10 days and no more than 45 days from July 25th 2017 with the next school budget validation referendum date consistent with any approval of order number 17-071 and whereas the budget is as follows the educational operating budget in the sum of forty seven million one hundred and seventy five thousand one hundred and sixty eight dollars resulted in the town of Scarborough raising the sum of forty two million two hundred and fifty four thousand and seventeen dollars as the local share for education operating budget and the town operating budget of thirty two million five hundred eighty nine thousand five hundred nineteen dollars resulting in the local share for the municipal budget the sum of eighteen million $167,935, resulting in a total net budget of $62,724,112 with a prop projected property tax increase of 2.99%. And now, therefore, be it ordered that the Scarborough Town Council moves approval of the amended fiscal year 2018 town and school budget in first reading, and be it further ordered that the final result of these changes produce a new total net budget of $62,000,000. $724,112 resulting in a projected tax rate increase of 2.99%. Is there a second? Second. Before um, I open it up for council comments, I wanted to give the public as well as the council kind of um, at least make uh, known the opinion that I've shared. The position that this was written from was a starting point that really took into consideration two pieces. One is we did not have any conversations about where we needed the budget to come in at on an adjusted basis. So therefore, the dollars are stated exactly as what was approved at the last, refer um, the last uh, town council meeting. The date was also, the date that we originally inserted was actually, um, I just realized I did something wrong, I apologize. The date that we had originally inserted, which was August 22nd, was the minimum date that was, we were comfortable with in presenting because otherwise it would have been too soon immediately after the second reading and not enough time for absentee ballots in the process. So I want people to understand that there was no attempt, because we, we, we being the manager and I, 
um, are being attacked by social media and people that have spoken tonight that we're trying to have some type of a voter suppression uh, process. And that is not the case because the fact is that there has to be a starting point for the conversation and we will go through those amendments that will come forward now. So I want people to be assured that we thought about it very carefully. There was nothing sinister about the, t the transaction or the, or the way that this was written. It was still simply a place in which we can build on. I don't start something because I do get to approve the motions and then detract from it. So I wasn't going to go all the way out to the maximum date and then subtract from it because I think that's a negative comment or a negative conversation rather than a positive one. So I want people to be comfortable with why we were starting at that point. Although I did just realize that um, I inserted the amendments that we had already discussed, so I apologize, but we can still have the conversation around that if you'd like. So um, I'm going to turn it now over to you. I just wanted to start like why we are here where we are. Have a So I'd like to make a motion to uh, reduce the educational operating budget by $50,000 uh, from 47,175,168 to 47,125,168. Is there a second? Yeah, Mr. Cazzo. So, um, I, I, I usually prepare some comments uh, in a statement when it's a difficult process for me because I, I want to stay on tact. So uh, please excuse me as I read these comments. Um, I offer this amendment in the hope that it will get the majority of the votes in the town to a yes vote for this budget. The word majority is not a benign word, nor one that I choose lightly. It's abundantly clear to me based on the outpouring of emails, phone calls, and conversations around town that there are those on both sides of this debate that will not accept this proposal for what it is intended to be, and that's an attempt to compromise. As a town councilor, I firmly believe my job, however unpopular, is to do what I believe is the right thing for our community as a whole. Sometimes in instances such as this, it means putting aside my personal views and opinions in an attempt to move the community to a hopefully better place. To those who feel that this reduction is not enough, I ask you, what kind of community do you want to live in? Do you really want to live in a community that continues to devalue its children, slander its leaders, and undermine its very own future and prosperity? Make no mistake, a budget is a reflection of a community's priorities and values. What kind of message does this send to the young folks who live in our community as they start to form their own values or try to decide if they want to stay here and raise families of their own? Is this really the kind of behavior we want to model for the next generation of people who will hopefully lead us and take care of us in the future? And what message does that send to the men and women who are trying to find safe, stable, and secure communities in which to raise a family? or for that matter, the ones who've moved here in the belief that they found that already in Scarborough. To those who feel that this reduction is too much, I ask you, where have you been? As a working parent of two young men, I completely understand the pressures of time and the demands of raising a family, but elections and votes have consequences. Regardless of one's individual views or reasons for taking the actions that they do, the only clear and irrefutable outcome is a yes or a no vote. Get engaged. Act. Don't react. Put the vote date in your calendar with a reminder. Make the 15 minutes it takes to vote a priority. Consider it an investment in your children's future. Only you have the power to change things in this town. <clears throat> Don't let others decide the fate of your children. It may sound like I'm embellishing here, but it really is that important. So ultimately, I realize there is no such thing as a 100% vote but I urge you all to take the time and reflect on the bigger picture for our town. Let's move past this process and let's please pass this budget. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Council? Council? Uh, you know, all seven of us supported uh, the first budget and the second budget. Uh, uh, and it was both were good budgets. Both were uh, worthy of our widespread support. Uh, it pains me to now further cut, uh, to vote for a further cut in the school budget. But as Councillor Chiesa said, elections have consequences. Uh, and it would be inappropriate to not respect the fact that the vote turned down the school budget. Uh, uh, 
I cannot go beyond 50,000. I think it's enough so that it's a serious amount of money. And we're not talking about really affecting tax rates at this point. We're talking about uh, uh, the school's budget. And uh, I hope everyone here will support it. Councilor St. Clair? Um, I was I was iffy on where to come in on this at what level because you know we we owe it to the voters to respect what the outcome was um, but yet I also have seen the school board's budget I've seen where they're cutting I see what they're losing and I was um, talking to someone the other day and I've mentioned this to a couple of school board members and just in passing but um, a woman at with who knows my daughter and we were just talking and she was saying well it's not that big a deal they're not losing that much and I said well you know what they I, I said this might not seem like a big deal to you but they're cutting the grandparents program and she said so and I said my kid would benefit from that she would um, and so I thought a lot about that and then hearing that 50,000, oh, okay, that's okay. If we go to 100,000, what does that do to the tax rate? Oh, we get an, another, what, point? Right, point, right. So, but yet, do you know what that 50,000 would, would do to the school board or the, the schools and the teachers? It would be astronomical for them at this point. Um, I'm... I'm not happy where where we are with the budget and and what's happening and what's going on, but um, I think we are where we are for this year, and I think we have to get this going and we need to set our sights on next year. Um, we have a superintendent who's a rock star. She's willing to work with everybody, and she's this is her first budget. She's just getting her feet wet, and she's she's ready to go. Let's do this. Let's get going. And I think we need to keep moving forward. And I don't think taking a $200,000 chunk out of the budget, the schools, is, is a necessary thing at this point. I don't think it's going to get us where we want to be. So at this point, I would support the $50,000 budget. Okay. Councilor Rowan. So I also prepared um, a little bit, so I apologize if I'm also reading. But um, I want to start with just kind of a, an analogy. Um, and so uh, it was about level service. So last year, I drove 100 miles a week to commute to work, and I get 20 miles to the gallon. Um, gas prices were $2 a gallon. Um, so my commute cost $10 a week. This year, gas prices have gone up to $3 a gallon. So the five gallons of gas I need to get to work every day now cost, excuse me, every week, now cost $15. So I haven't done anything different, uh, but my costs have gone up. And if I were to increase my gas budget by $2 from the $10 last year, the, the, all the way up to $12 this year, you could say that I increased my spending on gas. But the problem is that I'm only able to buy four gallons of gas, and it takes me five gallons of gas per week to get to uh, my job. So I can't drive that 100 miles um, um, because I don't have enough gas. Um, so in that case, $15 for my gas budget is a level service because that's what it takes for me to get the gas this year, excuse me, get to uh, work this year. Um, however, um, I've been told that I'm a blank checker and I've decided that I'm going to drive five miles out of my way every morning uh, to buy an overpriced fancy coffee. Um, so now my gas usage uh, per week at the $3 a gallon are going to cost $18.75. Um, so regardless of what I'm spending on the coffee because that's uh, a different part of my budget, um, the, the $3.75 is now an additional investment. Um, so $15 is level service, $3.75 additional investment. So now I'm going to uh, just kind of walk us through where we are and how we got here. Um, at the first reading on April 6th, the school board accepted as, as a starting point the superintendents uh, and the, leader, the leadership council's mission critical budget proposal of $48 million, uh, one, excuse me, $48,128,940, uh, 
uh, which um, was an increase of 4.96 percent from uh, the 2017 budget. The details of this budget proposal is covered extensively in tab 8 of your budget book, also available online and it makes a great read. Um, but the, um, um, it was a mission critical budget that was slightly over uh, level services. At the time, the budget contained $296,000 in new investment over level service, and, and that's, again, detailed in tab 8. Um, the level service budget that's outlined there uh, represented the cost of doing next year exactly what we were doing last year, um, so analogous to my increase in, in tax gas prices. And that $296,000 96 is new investment. On April 27th, the school board passed the uh, K through 12 operating budget of 47 million 563,168 dollars, which was an increase of 3.72 percent from 2017. Um, and I want to point out that this was not a bloated budget. Um, this was the budget that the joint finance committees of the school board and the town council determined did not quite meet a student need, nor did it meet their definition of mission critical. Um, but it did contain a number of changes uh, since the first reading that included a number of cost savings, but also included uh, me, cost savings with refined estimates and actuals and deferments, uh, but it also included reductions in, in some of that investment. Um, it also reduced staff development um, and uh, some salary and benefit reductions as more tenured resources were replaced with less. So the additional reductions from the original proposed saved a net $871,593, and it reflected a desire by the school administration and school board and the town council finance committee uh, to minimize the impact to the taxpayer. But it did include uh, in the adjustment $38,000 in reduced investment. We cut half, um, a half-time athletic trainer, um, and we reduced some staff development costs. Um, or excuse me, we reduced staff development investment, uh, which left us with a total new investment in the schools of $258,000. On May 4th, the Joint Finance Committee directed the superintendent to cut uh, an additional $192,000. Included in these cuts were a math teacher at the high school, supplies, textbooks, field trip funding, the grandparent program, um, or uh, at least one of the grandparents in the grandparent program, um, in there, there was also uh, cost savings. Um, so we had a, a student return from out of district, um, and the net savings there was $44,000. Um, we got $3,000 in grant revenue um, and $10,000 uh, savings in capital improvement with a, with a deferment. Um, uh, but the remainder, essentially, was from that investment. Um, and that le left us with $123,000 of that original $296,000 in new investment over level service um, from the 2017 budget. And that was exactly the budget that we passed on June 13th, uh, excuse me, that we passed at second reading and was defeated at referendum on June 13th. On July 5th, at our second reading, we passed a budget that reduced an additional $236,000 from the school budget. At the time, we didn't know what the impact was going to be. Uh, we were just told that it, they, there would be an attempt made to minimize the impact to the students. Um, the uh, immediately following, the school board met um, and uh, determined what the impacts were going to be. And, th and there were some cost savings there. Uh, we saved $39,000 for copiers, um, $32,000 for a refined collective bargaining budget, um, $6,000 in ice time that we didn't use last year. Um, but the remaining $159,000 was, was really a reduced investment. Among the investment cuts were curriculum instructional supplies. Uh, the career and academy coordinator, uh, reduced funding for an athletic uh, business secretary from 0 0.5 to 0 0.4, um, and a 6 through 12 behavior specialist from 1.0 to, to 0 0.6. Um, and I realize that all these positions, these were new positions in, in 2017, um, but they were identified by the school board and the leadership council and the superintendent as critically necessary, and they survived many, many rounds of difficult budget reviews and refinements. Um, so I want to be clear that, that this $236,000 was a, a, a big cut. Um, and I've heard uh, from a number of individuals 
who've spoken publicly and, and written in social media that they felt that it was a token cut. Um, but it, has, it was a real cut with real impacts uh, to students. Um, I'm the parent of a child who accesses the services of a behavior specialist. And I can attest that this is not a paper pusher who sits around in an office. Um, behavior specialists are on the front lines. They're in classrooms, on playgrounds, in the cafeteria, making sure that struggling students have the support that they need to access their education and that teachers and ed techs have the tools that they need to maximize student success and head off to potential problems. And they help ensure that children spend as much time as possible in the classroom learning rather than me remediating behavior problems. Um, so I want to circle back to my tortured uh, level service analogy. The budget that we just voted down by my calculation uh, left us with a net new investment over, over level service of negative $36,000. And this is just based on my definitions of what the cost savings and what was an investment cut. Um, and so I'm, I'm certain that we can quibble over the exact amount. Um, and, and the school board, the school department actually passed out a page at their, um, at their last meeting that, that indicated that, you know, there was still $128,000 in new investment excuse me, $130,000 in new investment in, in the budget that was just defeated. Um, but, um, uh, but my argument is that looking through the history that I just went through, um, it took a thousand paper cuts to get there. Uh, we were, um, so they weren't all cost savings. We had actual cuts in supply lines, in textbooks, in professional developments to offset that $130,000. Um, we, we had to do a, a ton of robbing of Peter to pay Paul. Um, and so the bottom line is that if my commute next year is going to cost me $15 a week and I don't drive out of my way for a fancy coffee, I do need, still need to get to work. And if my gas budget is up only $2 from $10 to $12, I don't have enough gas to get to work. And so what am I going to do? Um, so I didn't volunteer for this office to support the erosion um, of the quality of our schools. Um, and I, any budget that provides funding at a level that does not allow the school department to provide the same service that they did last year um, is going to erode the quality of schools, however gradually. Um, and I'm really struggling at this point about whether I'm going to support, um, support this, this budget. Uh, last night, I considered uh, proposing an increase of uh, the $36,000, which would bring us back up to, again, level service by my calculation. Um, but I couldn't bring myself to do it because it would take us over the 3% the goal, and I, and I felt like that was in, indefensible from the, um, uh, from the goal that we set to the, taxing, to the taxpayer. And, um, um, and I feel like we, we have an obligation there, and I, and I hear the, the, um, some of the desperate pleas that are saying that they're on a fixed income, and they they are struggling to pay their tax bills. Um, but I think there's a balance. Um, and I think uh, Councilors Donovan and Chiazzo and St. Clair have spoken very eloquently in, in support of uh, this amendment, but I'm, I'm really struggling uh, to support it given that we don't know what that $50,000 means. Um, the $30,000 from the last cut, you know, took out four-tenths of a behavior specialist, and I, I just don't know where that 50 k is going to come from. And so I'm not sure at this point if I can support it. Thanks. Other councils, uh, councilors. Go ahead. Um, I, I wish I had prepared something, um, but I'd, I'd like to take a little bit of different tack because for me, this is no longer about the numbers that we're talking about. Because frankly, whatever number we're talking about, it is not is not that large of a number. What what really struck me is, is our new superintendent has really brought a different perspective. I mean, I will share with you this year, both the Town Council and Board of Education have spent a lot of time working together. And I really think we made some progress on how we were related to each other, how we had conversations. Now I think we just need to turn that around. And, and, and I quote the superintendent saying, this is no longer about the number, it's really about the culture of our community. And I think you've heard some of that tonight. And it's been a real roller coaster. And I think, you know, I spent a lot of my career at Hannaford Brothers, and for any group at Hannaford Brothers, I sort of have this saying, you got to you got to storm before you perform. And I think we're really at that, that crux right now. And what I'd really like to say, I mean, I struggled coming in tonight thinking about where is the right place to be because I think it's absolutely critical that we get to yes this time around. I mean, there's lots of reasons. This is a third pass. 
This community really needs to come together and get to yes. I don't know how we do that. I think we have two very strong opinions, and I think you know those opinions are, are well founded. And, and so, what I'd really like to do, and I I came in tonight saying, clearly for for a while, those that have been voting, you know, sending messages our way about the budget, they've been asking for some very specific things that they'd like us to at least think about. And it's really not about today's number. It's really about forward looking about how are we going to approach this. No, I mean. I, Everybody I've asked doesn't want to go through a process like this every single year going forward. We need to get to a better and healthier place. And I think where we are tonight, this is really for the health of our community. There's just We're at the nth hour. But I was really encouraged. We, we, we got together tonight. There's some things we've been specifically asked about, and we really haven't addressed. And, and, it, and, and I, let me know if I'm speaking out of turn, all the counselors. But I think we, we put some things on the table saying, at least for some of the concerns that are being expressed for those that have voted no, there are a handful of issues that they talked about. And we have at least now agreed that we're going to have those conversations. And actually, as I understand it, the Finance Committee has been kind of charged with at least starting the conversations on what's the best way to proceed to really kind of address some of the issues that have been, there's, there's no answers tonight. But when I heard that, when I heard there's now a willingness to try to bring everybody together so we can move forward as a community. I'm really encouraged by that. And so I really think, you know, I, I was thinking initially the number may be a little bit more than what we're talking about. But if we can do those things we talked about tonight and really try to bring the community together so that we're in a better place next year and the year after, then I, I support the motion as, as, as suggested. Thank you. Councilor um, Foley. So I, I, I think a lot of things. I, I'm also very conflicted, um, but I, I kept uh, something kept haunting me all day long today, and it was that uh, I lost my father 15 years ago today, and he had a lot of things, um, most of which I can't repeat in public. Um, but the one that he that kept ringing for me was "Go big or go home," and uh, for me, I'd rather not cut this budget at all. Um, if it means 50000 to me feels nominal, um, not nominal to the schools, <laughs> nominal uh, in that if really that was the difference of getting our community to yes, that's, I find that really frustrating. Um, because I do think that the things that have been spoken about tonight around culture and trust um, are real. And I'm really uh, hopeful that we're having the conversation. It feels like more people from both sides are acknowledging that. Um, and I think that means that we can get to a better place next year. So I don't know if I can support it only because I feel like maybe it, it, it hasn't been the numbers all along. Um, maybe we should be staying right where we are and working on the process and the, those other pieces and bringing more people around to yes. Um, as that has been pointed out to me many, many times, it's first reading. Why do you always pass everything through on first reading? Or why do you always support things to go through? So I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm probably not going to support this, but I'm going to reserve the right to change my mind um, and do some more listening. Because I think that has been uh, something that we have learned has, is going to be helpful going forward. Um, yeah, so I guess that's I, uh, that's what all I have for now. <laughs> um, comments, uh, a couple of pieces. One is um, um, I am as, afflict as afflicted as everyone else. There are two outliers. It's um, advocating for what I believe is a very strong school budget where it is without any additional adjustments. This is a defensible budget. It was defensible the first time around. And if we are considering any adjustments, um, it's always nice to know in advance what those are, but the fact is, is that because of the process and because we have two separate boards, we have to respect the autonomy and the authority of each of those boards. We won't know that um, until maybe tomorrow night because if the citizens didn't know, I believe uh, the school board's having an emergency meeting tomorrow to talk about the outcome of today. So um, that's where if you have um, recommendations um, on any adjustments or where they should be within that budget, then that's the medium to share that because we don't discuss those changes here. Um, we react to them like everyone else um, and have opinions about it um, on where that's done, but it's a big challenge. 
I've listened throughout this entire process and I've taken into consideration and looked at the numbers and I'm not going to get into a coffee analogy um, except for in order to the farthest um, pendulum that can swing is the zero percent um, and then it could go to the argument that the school's budget, the, net, the net budget should be no more than three percent increase. That would require a $1.5 million adjustment. That is catastrophic in my mind to do that to our school system and what we've built up over time um, and it's inappropriate. So there needs to be a balance between zero and there needs to be a balance between $1.5 million. Um, to me, the $50,000, um, I know it's going to be painful. Um, at the same time, I also look at an entire budget, and this is um, me being um, somewhat uh, a banker and cold-hearted, $50,000 in a $40 million budget um, isn't exactly um, the hardest thing to do, and I think that with my own ideas of where that could happen, I think there could be some adjustments that have the um, least amount of impact on our students um, around some certain programs. Um, but that's, if I wanted to influence that outcome, then I need to run for the school board and I um, would make that a recommendation there. So is, is uh, $50,000 reasonable? Absolutely. I think that Councillor Donovan said it best at our last workshop and how, um, how we came to, or how he came to that conclusion and it was a good analogy. And that was, you know, what level do you have a significant impact? And $50,000 is in essence equivalent to one teacher. That doesn't mean that they're going to cut a teacher, but it's equivalent to it and it's impactful because we do have to be mindful and respectful for the voters that did come out and did not vote for the referendum. Regardless of how much I think it's defensible, um, we have to respect that as well and I think that the 50,000 is a reasonable uh, level. I, I have my own idea where that could be uh, done without impacting uh, the kids the most. Um, and so I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to support that. will not support any, any amount higher than that. Um, and I do agree with Councillor Hayes um, in that is that um, tonight's conversation really has been a, an extension of the entire process that we've undertaken in the last three years. Um, and we've made great strides. Many of the comments that were brought up are already issues that the Finance Committee has started looking at, such as metrics. So there's an, an debt, uh, debt management um, has been one of those. In fact, uh, we talked about that and directed the manager and the system manager to come back to us with uh, recommendations on our debt management policy and where we can have that and, and to get that data. So it might not have been at the level in which the people, some people are asking for, but it is something that we've already started talking about. Um, the request um, regarding uh, re-looking at our annual goal of um, at or below 3%, um, that is actually reviewed every year. That was our goal this year. It will be discussed as a goal next year, and we'll have that conversation, and we have it every year. Um, the one piece that I have consternation about is that um, any directive in which there is an expectation that this town council or any town council should dictate or direct the school board to do X, Y, or Z is completely inappropriate relationship. We don't have the authority to tell the school board that they must come in at 3%. They have a responsibility to tell us what they need, and then we provide the direction not to automatically come in at that number. I firmly believe that. We, can, we have the responsibility of making those adjustments and the decisions afterwards. It's not good and part of that positive relationship that we've done. And as far as um, you know, some of the other pieces around efficiencies, um, you know, audits or programs and bringing in consultants, there's a cost implication that isn't in the budget this year. It will have to be a consideration for next. We have no authority to tell the school board that they must participate or they must be included. So it requires us to reach out and continue the relationship and the development that we've made and get seven people who weren't at our workshop table um, in agreement with us and that we work through that. So um, I hope that there is no expectations of the community, at least with my vote tonight, that um, I agree with every one of those um, specifics or what the outcome might be, let alone the seven people have an opinion that are part of the decision-making process as well that we need to listen to. So um, all in all, I'm, I'm supportive of where we are in the $50,000 reduction. I don't like it. Um, but at the same time, I think it is uh, respectful in order to move this forward and get us to yes because it is um, about um, the entire community. Um, I, I do want to add there's a lot of emphasis around words that are chosen. And I actually don't believe that we have a budget problem. I don't believe that we have a budget crisis. What we have is a support crisis. It's about people in the community, certain segmentations that are involved that don't support decisions of the council. That I will totally recognize. It's not a budget crisis. We can afford the budget that we, that we proposed. We can afford it. Um, but we need to find alternatives for those who might not be able to absorb that. And that's where our work should be focused in on. 
So um, I know that we have a lot of work to do, and I look forward to doing it with all of you. So I will support the $50,000 reduction. Any other comments from council? Not seeing any, I'm going to move the question. I, just to go back, the amendment was to reduce the education operating budget by $50,000 in the amount of 40, uh, therefore the overall budget is 47,125, $47,125,168. Um, all in favor of the amendment. Um, that's five to, and all opposed to two. Any other adjust amendments? No? Did we want to adjust the dates? Oh, I um, I, 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 so that's where I made the mistake and apologize at the beginning because I actually read it as if I had already made those. So, yeah. well, um, so, so, so what are the dates? That the, are the dates, the public hearing will be on Tuesday, August 8th, and the second reading for Wednesday the 16th. That's in the current motion. As that's, that was in the original motion, so I apologize for the confusion. I was going off the notes from the meeting. Uh, from the <coughs> Workshop, so I apologize. And that meeting on so August 16th is your regular meeting, so yeah. an agenda item on so the agenda. So, would <coughs> now be the appropriate time to uh, to make a motion to amend? No, because that is actually in order number 17-072 for the second reading. I'm sorry for the public hearing. Thank you. It's next. Right. Uh, no, the vote. Hold on. Put it where the vote. That's what I thought you said. But my understanding is that the next vote is about the uh, yeah. the actual date of the referendum. And so if we want it right. to change. Oh, I apologize. Yeah. 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 yeah, we already got to there. So the next one is on the referendum date, which will be. So, so, we will only so, so I think the uh, a motion, a further motion to amend the motion uh, is in order at this time. This mm. this motion does not include the validation vote uh, the date. date. I'm talking about the um, public hearing and. Second reading. Second that was reading. that was in the yeah. first paragraph when I read it. Yes. We already, I, I already did that. I did it as part of the, re the original <coughs> reading but in error because I was looking at my notes from this fourth session. And we just moved to amend the dollar amount. Yes. Right. <coughs> so the main motion has been amended once. Correct. <coughs> so now the question is, is, is it in order to be amended further yes. for other aspects of it? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So. Okay. I uh, would move to amend to hold the uh, public hearing and second reading on Tuesday, August 8th. Mm -hmm. Is that, that's correct. That's correct. That's, uh, so that we'd combine second uh, second reading and public hearing. No, uh, no first reading no. is August yeah, 8th. Council, I think we're... Uh, yeah. um, so when I, when I read the motion, mm -hmm. I changed what was in writing based upon what was in the workshop in Eric's because I was going off my notes. So when I read that, I changed the public hearing um, or to August 8th, and then set the second reading to Wednesday, August 16th, mm -hmm. which that is the essence of the amendment that you're trying to propose. Now it's already in the motion. Oh, wants to combine them. No, I was, I was, I was, I, well, I wanted, combine them. I wanted, oh, I apologize. I wanted the council to consider combining them okay. so that the public would know what the final number is that we've settled upon so that people can get on with uh, voting and Discussing and deciding. Okay. I think the I, public I apologize for not. Yeah. So, so the motion is to you actually on paragraph one is to combine the public hearing and the second reading to August eighth. Mm -hmm. Is there mm -hmm. a second to the motion amendment? Second for purposes of discussion. Second. Councilor, would you like to speak to that since you made the motion? Sure. Uh, I think the uh, public would like to be able to have as much time as possible to uh, understand where we are with the cuts uh, so that they have the opportunity to uh, uh, start early voting. <clears throat> this will extend the period of time uh, for early voting because they can start to return ballots as soon as second reading is completed and it moves the second reading up a week. Any other Councilor St. Clair? Um, in all due respect to Councillor Donovan, I do not agree with that. Um, so I'm not going to support that. I'd like to see them split. I do not want to have... We needed a little entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's how he shuts me up. <laughs> um, uh, I'd like to see them split. So I'm not going to support this. Okay. Other council comments? Council, council Foley? 
Um, we, we kind of talked about this earlier. I also, for consistency's sake, and uh, for one of the speakers actually spoke to it tonight, one of the things that happens when we do combine uh, the public hearing and the second reading is that we will maybe potentially, I think in this case, we may not make those kinds of substantive changes, um, but sometimes we do, and that doesn't allow the uh, public the opportunity to weigh in. So I like it as we read it, um, so I'm not going to support the change. Other council comments? Council Rowan? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm also of the opinion that, that uh, the, the three weeks, assuming that we change the date of the, the referendum um, as discussed in the workshop, um, gives plenty of time for, for the voting. Um, and I think it's uh, important to have the public hearing and the second reading on different days. Council Chiazzo? So I, I mean, I would just like to point out that, you know, bear in mind the public, the public hearing comes before second reading. So we'll receive input, but we still have the prerogative to make amendments second reading that the public will not be able to react to. And that's just regardless of how we conduct the process. I want to be clear out there that it, we still have the option and the ability to make motions at second reading mm -hmm. without that public input portion. That's just the way the process works. So whether they're combined in one meeting, the public hearing first, then second reading, or we split them out, the process is still the same. We still have to honor that process. So, I think I didn't really state what I was getting at correctly. I mean, basically, what I see or what I hear, the feedback I've gotten is that if we, when we combine them, well, you must have already made up your mind because you're not reacting to what the public had to say. When you separate them now, like I might change my mind based on something I hear there, and so I, perception does matter. Um, that's. I don't know if that helps clarify, but I, yes, you're right, and amendments can and will be made sometimes at second reading. That's the way it's going to go. Councillor Hayes. Yeah, and I think at this point, if we can separate the two events, I would support that, and part of that is because I think actually in some of our public comment we heard earlier, you know, Kate St. Clair and Councillor St. Clair is really trying to do a communication roundtable. That's what we've clearly heard from that communication roundtable, that people feel they really want to be able to come, make their public comment, and so that it, it, we can go away and reflect on what they have to say. Their, their feeling that they express is when you have the public comment and then you immediately move into second reading, that may not give us the time to kind of consider. So again, we've talked a lot about it tonight about culture and perception. There's some people's perception that that is a preferred process. So I, 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 if we can do it, if we've got time, um, I, I prefer having the two events separated. Councilor Kevin. So I'm, I'm kind of referring back to what uh, Tom's comments in our workshop was, is what do we really want to achieve with this? Do we, do we need more time for public input at this point? Or do we want to allow maximum voting time? Because they're, they're, they, they offset each other. We can't have it both ways. So um, I, I think um, from, from what I've heard, it seems like we're, at least now, at this point, kind of coalescing around an action uh, I'm not. I, I'm not sure. Uh, we're going to get public input between now and then, anyway. We, I'm assuming we're going to get emails and phone calls like we traditionally and typically do. So I, I don't know if the discussion is really that substantive. Uh, that we that we need to have a. I personally wouldn't need to have a public hearing, then a time to reflect, and then then a second then a second. I would defer to a opportunity for more people to vote, especially if we do what we say we're, what we're thinking of doing and having that vote on the 5th. Because we, because we have that lost Monday, I would think we'd want to give more people time <coughs> to respond and have the opportunity to vote. So I would tend to, at this point, agree with Councillor Donovan. I think hopefully it's clear to the community that we're not trying to suppress people, we're not trying to uh, 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 not take the input. I think, in my opinion, the emphasis should be on allowing people more time to vote because the, in essence, as we've discussed, it's not necessarily about the number. It's about the philosophy and the process. And I don't know if, if additional time to reflect on that is, is going impact, to impact the second reading. So. Yeah. Uh, St. Clair. Um, I, just, I just don't agree with that. Um, I think if people are going to vote, they're going to vote, like I said, in the workshop. I don't think giving people um, an extra week is going to get more people in here to vote. I just don't. Um, and I, that's sad in itself, but that's what I've been seeing over the last 
couple of elections that we've had, we see the same, I mean, I said at every election, we see the same faces over and over again, and, which is great, um, but I think it's more important for us to allow people that extra time to absorb the information and speak about it if they want to before our second reading than it is to give them that extra week of voting time. I just, I don't, I don't think that is beneficial, so. Sorry, that's where I stand. Any other comments? Not seeing any. All those in favor of the amendment? And that's two. All opposed? And that's five. Thank you. Any other amendments? Yeah. So I need to, is it already done? What? Is it already scheduled out that way? Or do we have to make an amendment to this to split it? It's already split, it's right? It's already split. My apologies. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other amendments? Not seeing any. Moving the question as amended. Um, all those in favor? Um, this is a roll call vote? No. No, we don't even. No? Okay. Um, all those in favor, please? One, two, three. This, so uh, I see um, some, uh, but, uh, not to take the vote, I see some concern in your eye. Are you confused or need clarity? Yeah, are we? Um, the main motion as amended is what is being which is the $50,000 reduction. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, okay, yes, and gotcha, sorry, and sorry. sorry. And the what? And the, and the, and the, oh, sorry. And the split of the dates. And the split of the dates, right. Support. You're okay? I'm okay, okay. thank you. I wanted to make sure, I saw, I saw the eyes, I saw the eyes. Yeah. I was either that or I was gonna, you know, maybe be lasered to death or something. <laughs> um, all those in favor of the main motion as amended, please raise your hand. And that is five, all opposed to two. Um, Next item, sorry. Um, order number 17-072, act on the request to set the date, time, and location of the school budget validation referendum for Tuesday, Tuesday, September, um, well, um, we'll do it for the, uh, Tuesday, <coughs> September 5th, 2017. If everyone's okay, I'm, I just changed it based upon the workshop. Is there a second? Second. Uh, comments or questions? I, I think we discussed it pretty regularly in, in workshop, but for those who weren't present at the workshop, I, I think we've overwhelmingly heard that uh, the majority of people, regardless of how they come down on the budget, wants it moved to September 5th. I don't feel that uh, from staff's report that there's any detrimental financial impact on the town as long as it's passed. Um, then I, I think we should honor that request and, and uh, have the vote on the fifth. Any other comments, questions? Um, so I commented on this in the workshop, and I, I wanna, I'm going to add a little bit to that. Um, I'm going to vote yes because uh, I think it's important that uh, we are hopefully unanimous on this. I have consternation because it is the Tuesday after Labor Day weekend in which a lot of people are away. It does not provide for the opportunity for emergency situations which people do exercise. We had 50 people in the last re referendum question exercise that, and there are also people that have circumstances. I hope that the timing, um, the additional time that we're uh, providing between the second reading and the, the Friday before the uh, referendum, people do get out and vote um, as quickly. I believe they will be available tomorrow. Um, and there's, she'll explain um, when you pick them up, there's stipulations about when they can be returned. But um, I hope people get out and vote, so I will vote in favor of the September 5th, even though I think that there's going to be situations where some citizens might not be able to vote, um, and they need that circumstance. So um, I will vote on that. Um, the other piece is that, um, never mind, I'm not even gonna say it. It's, it's just, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes you just need to stop and not say it, um, no matter what, and I'll uh, say it uh, later and off the record. Um, but um, with that, uh, is there any other comments or questions? Did you want to make clear that people can start to take out early uh, voting ballots tomorrow? I did say that. Today. Correct. Uh, but they just simply cannot return them until second reading. So actually, um, in that short brief moment, I actually uh, got a little bit of courage, and I'm going to say it, but maybe in a different way. <laughs> so um, comments have been made. Thanks, uh, Councillor Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, comments have been made at the beginning uh, regarding statements that I personally have made 
um, in the newspaper to a reporter. Um, the fact is that anybody who is interviewed or anybody who speaks to a reporter, we don't select the title of the article. So while I can appreciate the criticism, I shared no responsibility and will not apologize for something that a newspaper editor or a newspaper writer wrote um, as far as the way that they described our comments. I will say two things. One is that um, out of respect to our town manager, it is our responsibility to make sure we have all of the information. And part of that is also what is the financial risk and the outcome if the vote doesn't pass. It's his responsibility to provide us with that information, and he's done that. He shared it during the workshop, and there is a financial risk. And in my view, it is critical, and then it could lead us into a crisis, and it has long-term implications. So as an example of that, as it was discussed, and I do encourage everyone to watch the workshop, if we do not pass this and we have to go and get a tax anticipation note, there will be an increased expense that is not included, included in this budget. So the $50,000 we just adjusted will be spent out the door in order to be able to cover that tax anticipation note. I can tell you, I'd rather, even though I'm a banker and my job depends on those type of things, I'd rather spend $50,000 on education or even on municipal services rather than spending it on interest and giving it to a bank because we don't have the fortitude to pass a budget. So it's very important that everyone gets out. We will manage to whatever risk occurs. I know that we will. I know we have a very competent staff on both the municipal and the school side, and we will manage accordingly. But there is risk, and I stand 100% by that. I stand 100% behind um, the manager and his statement because it's his responsibility to give us that, and he represented it um, very well. Um, so, you know, I just hope people take into consideration the other part of this risk is also what is the impact of the citizen when you issue a tax bill that is not accurate, you have to then reissue a new one based upon the commitment laws and the regulations around it, the impact of the mortgage companies receiving that information, and the fact that some citizens will then overpay as a result of that, and then probably have some type of expectation in receiving an abatement or rebate, and what that process, and our finance director made that clear that there is risk in that as well. So I stand 100% behind my comment. I will not rebu uh, rebuke it. I will not withdraw it at all. There is a risk and it's real and it has a significant impact on employees and the citizens of this town. So I encourage everyone to get out and vote. Any other comments? Not seeing any. All those in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you. There are no other items except for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you.